You work hard to achieve that. What a lot of you that are sitting here need to do is get better than the next person. Okay. If you don't get better than the next person, if, I'm using myself again now, if I were waiting for somebody to create jokes and then I will use the jokes, I will never be fresh. If, if you don't have ideas that are new, then you will be relying on ideas that are old. And the customers that want to pay won't be paying for ideas that are old. They'll be paying for ideas that are new. Somebody has an event now and he says, um, let's get so and so. I say, uh, but we heard him last week. And he and, he and this other guy, the same thing they said. Uh, your market is going. And I don't know about you, for me, I don't do dirty jokes. I don't tolerate it on my page. If you crack dirty jokes or do anything dirty on my page, I block you. Now, there are some people who will tell you, oh, it's good, it's good. I say, okay, continue. Defcom Merchant Bank in 1994 had an event and I went there to perform. And one of the guys came and said, eh, there's this joke that I've heard. Tell it. I said, but it's a dirty joke. He said, tell it. Our chairman likes it. I said, eh. I was working with BC a lot, so I went to BC. I said, there's this joke that this man said I should crack. I, it's not my joke, and I don't think it. He said, don't tell it all. Because that man would deny the joke. I said, eh. But guess what? Alain Blow was working with me. And I told Alain Blow. <laughs> Alain Blow said, ah, it's a very funny joke. <laughs> and started telling the joke. Halfway through the joke, somebody calls me and says, are you the one that let that man hold the microphone? I said, no, that, then I looked for the man that told us to tell. I said, that is the man that said we should tell the joke. And I saw them pushing him out of uh, Lagoon. Jade, 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 Jade. Chairman, he told me, Barry, Jade, Jade. And the guy now, you know, so when the event finished, the guy was waiting for me, he said, Ali, so why did you tell them I was the one that told you? Boshe, my cock, Boshe, my lap, Boshe. What I'm trying to tell you is that you need to be very careful the kind of things that you learn, but the thing is make sure that you know the tools and the challenges in your business. The, 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 there's so many people here, I'll say clearly, there's so many people here who wait for chances to come to them. Don't. Create the chances or let the chances meet you where you are. That is, that you've developed yourself to a point and somebody says, one day somebody says, where can we get, you are already there. Mm. Not where can we get so, 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 and so. And then you now say, give me some time. Let me upgrade. So, mm, let them meet you there. So I, in one word, your preparation must be ready for opportunity to come. Under G information that is reaching me about you. Okay. Is that you work so hard that your staff have to tell you there's no diesel in the generator. Can you go home? They switch it off. At 1 a.m. <laughs> but I'm changing. Okay, she's changing. So it's give her a year. hand. She's work-life balance. So give us some, you know, some, just okay. some points. That... Uh, just, just a couple of points. Personal and then some things. I'm addicted to books. So um, um, I got one recently that I think is very apt and very useful for um, the audience and myself. W when I first started, this was in uh, 14 and a half years ago, 1999, um, on Joel Ogunaike. I had an 18 square meter space. And, um, you know, I put my best into it. All I learned in school, I practiced. Um, I wanted to be different from the average um, community pharmacy that you would see at that time. And if you, if you know um, the pharmaceutical industry very well, you realize that sometimes competition could be idumota. Where people do not understand the concept of markup, they put small on top. They buy at 100, they sell at 102, right? Now, we cannot do that. Um, I have pharmacists in my employment. When I started, they were, as a matter of fact, as at this point in time, there are probably only two um, classmates of mine in the country. They've all gone to the UK, US, and Canada. So how do you retain you know, such people? You have to pay right. You have to source right. You have to obey. We have chosen to obey the laws of pharmacy. How do you handle competition, for instance? Yeah. Um, I've got a major competitor. And um, sometimes under the same roof, what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, how do you differentiate yourself? Mm -hmm. For us, um, it started with our service, professionalism, ethics, um, um, excellence, like I keep saying, and excellence in everything, from our logo to our name to our slogan, 
to our colors, to the uniform of our staff, to training. This is very important. Now, I'm not exactly Alibaba, and I'm definitely not Banky W. I'm a very regular woman. I'm a pharmacist, and I belong to a very structured and conservative industry. So I'm hoping that there are a few of you in there, you know, who, who understand what I'm talking about. Um, and so the way we had to differentiate ourselves was in our service, was in customer service, was in training. I made sure that our pharmacists are up to date with cutting edge information. And um, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time before people begin to um, notice the difference. Now, those who know me know that I'm a critic. Sometimes when you don't ask me, I give it anyway. Um, but, you know, if somebody is giving you criticism, really look within and, and self-check. I'd like they, to come in there. Women are very sensitive to criticism. You have to absorb criticism. When somebody criticizes you, they are only helping you to improve your processes. So don't, don't, it's not personal. Don't internalize it. You're not a failure because you've been told a way to do it better. Can, can I have a hand there? You know, so. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Change is a constant. You've got to be flexible. Um, sometimes if something is not working, just move on and redefine yourself. They think in the now rather than in the future. They lack social and influencing skills. The new buzzword in America now is leadership. They're setting up centers for leadership. Become a leader. There's another book called Why Should Anybody Be Led By You? I think you should look for it and, and get that. They cannot wait for what they want. In other words, deferred um, gratification. gratification and have difficulty with delayed rewards. They are pessimistic and cynical about themselves. I'm a diehard optimist. When people ask me, don't I come across challenges? They're there. I mean, one of the major challenges, having 300 staff is manpower. If you run your business in this country, you know that your human resources gives you a headache. I mean, they make you say things you don't want to say, that a Christian shouldn't be saying. But you know what? Um, for me, my mantra as an individual is that to every problem, there's a solution. And another way to put it is that with God, all things are possible. So the mountains can be there, but there are solutions, you know, to overcome. Um, so don't be pessimistic. They take advantage of others. They lack integrity. Reasons why people succeed. Um, this isn't in this book, but I added it, and I've said it before. Obey God's word. Put God first. Learn to hear God for direction. That is so critical. I'm a firm believer in baby steps. You put one foot in front of another. 14 years ago, if anybody said, oh, you would have 100 branches by 2020, or you'd be running Casabella, which is not my training, I would say, oh, really? But you see, you don't know what the future holds. Just do your part, which is to put one step in front of the other. Um, reasons why people succeed. They know what they want. You have to know what you want. You have to know yourself. You're not defined by what you were called when you were young. You've got to know yourself. They have realistic goals. They challenge themselves. They live by what is possible. They have smarty goals. And I'm sure you know about smart goals, but I just saw smarty. There's an I, which means it's interesting. Um, um, they are motivated. They're committed, committed to excellence. They are willing to pay the price in terms of time. They will walk through personal slippage and failure. You buy the book. I think, I think <laughs> what we might have to do is, yes, like, they I, I promise you okay. how many points. Okay. Um, buy the book. Good. Can we give a hand? <laughs> Another hand for Bookie George. Thank you very much. And uh, we probably, if you could do an article for us. Can you? You know you like writing. I know you do. You see, I've toasted. I've got an article out of her. What, what is that one? Have the influencing skills. What is the advice you can give? If there are three, four things you want to tell us, sort of like in rounding up, that you think for Banky is key to success. Okay. Three, four things. Um, I've said some already, so hopefully you were taking notes when I spoke earlier, but, I mean, going on from there, um, something that um, uh, Mrs. George, George yes. said that I actually believe very strongly um, is about, she said, delegating to the supernatural. What I say is we tend to want to give the devil too much credit and God too much work. 